Uh, well, it started, I guess, with the 2012 Fringe Festival. I got involved with Theatre Unleashed through one of their 24-hour shows. Um, I spent most of last year assistant directing uh, with Little Shop of Horrors and then the original play Round Rock. Um, and shortly after Little Shop, uh, the artistic directors, uh, Carlos and Jake, approached me and they said, hey, we have this play we're doing next season. Uh, it's Trust by Stephen Dietz. Do you want to do it? And I read it and fell in love with it and said, yeah, let's, uh, let's go for it. Well, tell us a little bit of background of what Trust is all about and, and what, what was that s significant portion of, of the play that you read that really pulled you into wanting to do this project? Um, yeah, so Trust is, is kind of on a more abstract level about relationships and kind of the trust and mistrust that we have within each other. And um, everybody talks about, you know, we need love to have good relationships, but I think trust is sometimes more essential than that. And that's kind of what this play explores and what happens when that trust goes away. Um, and it deals with, you know, there's a rock star and his fiance and he's on the road all the time. And then she's at home kind of trying to have a life of excitement herself. And and there's the the radio DJ who's trying to you know get with the 20 year old, and she has nothing. She doesn't want anything to do with him. Uh, so it's really just kind of all about humanity, I guess, and kind of what we go through. Um, there's even the the kind of former rock star who hooks up with the new rock star, and she's trying to relive that part of her life through him. So it's yeah, it's all about kind of what we have now and what we're hoping for and what we want to have, and then what we've lost in the past. Um, as far as what made me want to do the play is uh, the, there's some really surreal moments in it. Like the opening scene is takes place in a restaurant. We see Becca, the main character, sitting there and she's having dinner with this unseen man across the table from her. And uh, on the other side of the stage, Gretchen is watching her from the bar and kind of performing this monologue narration that's right. letting us see into the inside of Becca's character and letting kind of us hear her thoughts. So it's it's an interesting take on the voiceover, I guess you might see in uh, movies. And so yeah, it just that kind of surreal quality that it had, and just this that it's it's normal but not quite. Like there's something off right, about it. And right. so there's something about that that I really wanted to play with. I think yeah. Oh great. Yeah. So were there any challenges of of bringing this to the stage or whatnot? <laughs> Uh, yes, many challenges. Uh, for one, this is a completely new space that was uh, being remodeled in the last two months, basically. They were upstairs at the Crown on the Belfry stage. Um, and so, yeah, not having a space that was completed, having something that was kind of in process and not knowing all the details necessarily and kind of getting thrown curveballs was a, a huge challenge that I wasn't used to. I'm used to working in spaces that have been around for 20 or 30 years and you kind of know the secrets of them. So it's been fun. It's been interesting trying to figure everything out here. Um, and yeah, and then there's the scene where one of the actresses throws some glasses around and that's its own unique challenge and props and budgeting and things like that. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it was a fun process, but full of challenges, I think. Wow, that's yeah. kind of scary thinking about throwing glasses. <laughs> were, were you thinking, oh my goodness, are we going to have some liability? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a, definitely a concern, but I mean, it's one of those things we've taken a lot of precautions and we've done, I think, everything we can. And um, I, I don't know if you could do much else uh, to make it safer than we have already. Yeah. Well, definitely, uh, regarding a curveball, um, talking off camera, you mentioned something about a curveball with your lead actor, Michael. <laughs> How did that, uh, what kind of curveball was that all about? Uh, yeah, so we, uh, Michael Galanti plays our lead, Cody. Um, and he actually didn't even come out to the initial auditions. Uh, he had some other projects going on, didn't want to take on too much, and so he stayed away from the auditions, and we cast the part from the people who auditioned, and our lead, unfortunately, had to uh, leave the production because of personal reasons that came up in, I think, maybe the second week of rehearsal, and so that was something that, you know, you don't expect that to happen, you don't plan for that at all, um, and so we frantically spent a weekend contacting different people, and kind of everything kept falling apart. And so Sunday night, finally, Michael came over to my apartment uh, to do a, a reading. And he walked in the door, and I was just kind of like, oh, my God, this is Cody. Like, he's here in front of me. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, he's a, he's a rock star, you know. And, so, and he just walks in the door, and, and you just look at him, and you're like, wow, this guy is amazing. Um, and then he talks, and he's the nicest guy ever and just a, a total sweetheart. Um, and then we did the reading, and it just it kept getting better. Like, he was oh, yeah. hitting his beats, and, like, some amazing stuff was happening between him and Michelle, who plays Becca. So it was this weird thing of, okay, this wasn't the ideal situation, but we've gotten something really incredible out of it with Michael. Right. Yeah. So when he, when he first came to, the, to uh, rehearsals, how did everybody else kind of react to him since he was just thrown in right away? 
Uh, they loved him, and I mean, he kind of—he doesn't give you any other option but to love him. Um, he's just one of the warmest, nicest people I've ever met. And any any instinct you might have to say, "Oh, I don't know about this guy," he just kind of, he'll come up, shake your hand, talk to you for a few minutes, and you're like, "Okay, no, you're you're awesome." And he's uh, yeah, he's been a, a great to work with. Right. So you never heard of him before? I I had not. I had only heard of him kind of. He was a new member to the company, and so I'd heard some rumors about mm. you know this new guy who was really nice and really good looking and. Uh, he had done mostly film, I guess, and he's from New York. And I've just kind of learned more and more about him, and I'm just fascinated. And yeah, he's been a lot of fun. Well, tell us a little tidbit about him. What what have you learned about him during the rehearsals? And actually, you've already the play's already uh, been shown for two weeks already. Uh, yeah, we're we're finishing up our second week right now. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to, I don't want to embarrass him or anything. Um, uh, what's something I learned? Well, I learned that uh, he he started acting because. Uh, he was a medical student, I guess. He had gotten his degree in biochemistry, I think, and he was studying to be a doctor. Uh, and the British director approached him and basically said, you should be acting and you should be taking it seriously. And he said, okay, and kind of hasn't looked back. Um, and I think the great thing is that he, he does have most of his background in film, and that's something he's very good at. Um, and that was something that, especially early in the process, he, you know, he, was, he was having these beautiful, intimate, quiet moments, and I had to be like, hey, you have to speak up or we can't hear you. And, you know, and you have to be a bit bigger so that people can see you. Um, but he, he recognizes that theater is a place for, for training. It's a place where you become a better actor doing a play every night for six weeks and having to go on these character journeys, you know, three times a week for two and a half hours. Um, and so I think he, he has a lot of respect for theater, which as somebody who has spent most of my life doing theater and focusing on that, um, that's really refreshing and really nice to have someone who is having a successful career in film and television and come to theater and say, this is where, this is where the work happens and I want to be a part of it. 